relaxing the knees down. And just coming into the space of the belly. You might bring your hands to your belly. And as you inhale, let the belly move into your hands. And as you exhale, very gently draw navel to spine. So belly moves away. So in towards the center line. And try that a few more times. Just inhaling into the belly, expanding out. And exhale, drawing navel into spine. And one more belly breath. And bringing one of your hands uh, to your heart, breathing into the belly, then the chest. And elongating out the exhalation, follow navel in towards spine. Invite the lower lungs to fill and then the upper. And as you exhale, chest lowers first, then belly. So as if you were Filling up a pitcher of water from the bottom to the top. As you inhale fully. And as you exhale, as if you're pouring the pitcher out. So from top to bottom. Let's take three more rounds. Inhaling into the belly. Up into the heart space. Exhale. Chest lowers first, then navel in towards spine. One more. And bringing hands to prayer, setting your intention for your practice. So uh, intention setting, the practice of Samkalpa. come to standing at the top of our mat. All right. So coming into your feet, bring your hands to your hips and we'll start to circle out the hips. Just getting into your legs, connecting to your toes. Yeah. And roll the neck around. And finding center. So inhale as you root through the feet, reach the arms up. And exhale, folding forward. And I'm going to take three rounds rolling to standing. So I want you to bend your knees, shake your head yes, and bring your chin towards your chest and ragdoll up. So you're scooping out the belly, rolling up to standing. Yeah, any tension behind your neck or shoulders, just observing. Roll the shoulders back and down. Exhale fully. Inhale, reaching high. And exhale, forward fold. And you can swan dive or melt down center line. Shake out the head. Take a few breaths, even rock back and forth. So we're just getting into the body. You can bend and extend your legs. And on an inhale, scoop out the belly and roll up to standing. So you're pressing your feet into the floor. And only activate your abs. So notice if you're engaging the back muscles to roll up. So shoulders back and down. One more time. Inhale, reaching up. Maybe a slight back bend. Exhale, melting down. Forward fold. Shake your head, yes. And roll to standing. So just bring your heels into the floor. Big inhale, reaching high. Exhale, melting down. And we'll step back into down dog. So from down dog, let's rock back 
and forth from down dog into plank a few times. So lift your heels as you inhale, coming forward into your plank. Exhale, back into downward facing dog. Inhale, forward into plank. Pause in your plank and slide the shoulder blades down the back. Release tailbone towards the earth. And we'll lift the hips up. On an inhale. Coming into your plank pose. Exhale back to down dog. All right, and from down dog, we'll lower the knees. Bring the hips back to the heels. One breath in child's pose. And you can rock the hips from side to side. Maybe walk the hands over to the right. And then to the left. And we'll meet in tabletop. So tabletop position. A few rounds of cat and cow. Exhale for cat tuck, rounding. Inhale for cow. So warming up the spine still. Exhale cat. Inhale, heart forward for cow. And bend your elbows a little bit. Spiraling the eyes, the elbows forward. Okay, so we're gonna work on our plank pose. If you have a bolster or a pillow, uh, please place it right where your hips would be. And then if you have some blocks at home, uh, we want to uh, put them kind of on the inside of our hands for bumpers for our shoulders. Okay. So middle fingers coming straight out of the wrist and you can walk the knees back behind you and we're going to lower down so that your shoulders rest on the blocks. Slide the shoulder blades down, inhale, press up, exhale, shoulders on the blocks. So the tips of your shoulders, you might... Uh, adjust a little bit. You can walk the hands down some. So see how I have a 90 degree bend in my elbows. Palm the mat, screw the hands into the floor, press your 10 toes into the mat, and inhale, press up. Let's try that uh, three more times. So exhale, lower down. You got the bumpers for your shoulders. Inhaling up. Exhale, lower down. And you want to lead with your heart. So maybe even gaze forward. Inhale, pressing up, and exhale, lower down. So this time, go ahead and move the blocks off to the side. You got your uh, hips on the bolster, and we'll inhale up into Cobra. Now, big toes touching. We're going to teeter here. So as you lower your chest down, lift the legs. Inhale up. Back body's engaged. Exhale, lower the chest down, lift the leg. So you're kind of a teeter-totter here. Yeah. Inhaling up and exhaling down. Okay, one more. Zipping up through the inseam of your body. Elbows are squeezing in. Inhaling up. And rounding the hips back into child's pose. You can move your bolster forward out of the way. And again, rock the hips from side to side. Coming into tabletop, on an inhale, one round of cat and cow, so exhaling for cat, tuck, rounding, inhaling cow, tuck your toes under and lift the hips high for downward facing dog. This time we'll walk the hands back towards the feet for forward fold, taking hold of opposite elbows, let your body hang. And rolling up to standing. So allow the arms to dangle, scoop out the belly, chin towards chest, rolling up nice and slow. Good, Tadasana. And we'll find chair pose to build a little bit of heat. So sitting down into your hips, reach the arms up, release tailbone down. Scan the body. Observing the heat start to rise as you relax the shoulder blades down the back. And we'll inhale and come on up. 
exhale, hands to heart. Shift the weight to the right foot and we'll hug the left knee in towards the chest. Right, relaxing that left hip down, roll the shoulders back. And now connect all the dots from your right heel, up the leg, up the spine, and all the way to the back of the head. And left foot comes down. We'll meet in chair pose. Three breaths. So again, your fingertips can be straight out in front or hands to prayer. If this is too much to have the arms up. And if the arms are up, remember to shrug your shoulders. So draw them up towards the ears and then relax the shoulders down the back. You want lots of space between your earlobes and your traps. Sometimes uh, if you check in with the face, you might even find that you're pursing your lips or uh, scrunching your face a little bit. So even relax the face and we'll inhale, come on up. Hands to heart, shift the weight into the left foot and hug the right knee in towards the chest. And now remember to release that hip down, roll the shoulders back. And then again, draw in a line from your left heel up the back of the leg from the tailbone, up the spine, up the back of the neck, to the top of the head. And imagine that you have the wall behind you and you're going to lean back into it. Good. So standing balancing, nice and easy. Minimal effort. Just concentrate on what you're doing. Relaxing your toes and your standing foot. And release. And that is one of the best things about uh, this practice is that it teaches us to, to really hone in and nothing else for the next hour matters. <laughs> Shut it all out. It'll be there for you when we're done. So sitting into your hips. Five breaths in your chair pose. Sit a little lower. And inhale to standing. Inhaling up, exhale, hands to heart. All right, so now that we're ready, uh, we're gonna turn this into a flow, adding Virabhadrasana one. So coming into chair pose, three breaths, pressing down into your right foot, inhale up, hugging that left knee in towards the chest. Stay it nice and tall, and then we'll step the left foot back for warrior one, reaching the arms forward and up. So anchoring into the outer edge of the back foot, bending into the front knee, you wanna release the tailbone down. Now back leg is strong, so you might wanna give it a pat just to make sure that the quad is engaged. Drawing the deep lower belly in, so heart lifts. And lifting the toes on your front foot. Again, relaxing the shoulder blades down the back. So you might feel a stretch all the way down that left side body. We'll bring the hands to heart. Shift the weight to your right foot. Hug the left knee in towards chest one more time. And if you want to take this up a notch, you can interlace your fingers underneath that left thigh and kick out through the heel, leaning back. And we'll meet in chair pose. So you get a nice stretch in that hamstring, keeping the heat building, inhale to chair, get to release tailbone down, hollow out the gut. Shifting the weight to the left foot now. Hug the right knee in towards the chest. Two to three breaths. And stepping back into warrior one. So right foot comes back again at an angle. So you have a nice broad base. Your back foot's 45 degrees and bend into the front knee. Might bring your hands to your hips. So the right hip is rolling forward 
And you want to find some depth and sink into the left hip socket. Release tailbone down. Inhale, reach the arms up. Five breaths. Warrior one. So, lifting the toes on your front foot. You might circle that left knee. Try some figure eights in your hips. Just little micro movements to adjust. Drawing the deep lower belly in and up, feel the stretch running all the way down that right side body. And reach up through your pinkies. And lift the gaze upwards. And release. So you're shifting the weight into your front foot now, hugging the right knee up and into the chest. Interlace your fingers underneath that left, or right leg, excuse me, and extend the heels forward. And release. Meeting in chair pose. All right, so we're going to keep adding on from chair. Shift the weight to the right foot. And we'll lift the uh, left knee. Coming through Virabhadrasana 3. Uh, so let's reach back through Warrior 3 and then come forward into Dancing Shiva three times. So here's one. Back into Warrior 3. Dancing Shiva, drawing that left knee forward. One more time, Warrior 3. And we'll take a big step back into a high lunge this time. And interlace your fingers, bring them to your right knee and we'll all lower down into the crescent lunge. Okay, unfurl your back toes and press the neck of your foot into the floor. You might scrunch your right toes forward a little bit so we can deepen our lunge. Now, back out of the hips just a little bit. So here I'm going to dip into the hips. And it's really great for a psoas stretch, but now we're going to back out. So working for stability, drawing the inner thighs towards each other so you can draw all the energy up through the inseam of the body. And lift the arms. Now, whenever we're lifting the arms, we want to lift from the hara, the fulcrum point, the deep lower belly. So let's reach the arms up. And exhale out to the sides. Now you can even bend your elbows, expanding across the chest. Bring your hands to prayer. Inhale, reaching up. Elbows down, out to the side, hands to prayer. One more time. Inhale, reach high. Expand across the chest, elbows down. Good. And we'll plant the hands, tuck the back toes, lift the knee. And you might shorten your stance just a little bit. Square the hips off to the back of the mat. And we'll inhale, reach up. High lunge. And rolling into warrior two. So your left heel comes down. You're going to bend into that right knee. Okay, now check your alignment. And this time, uh, your right heel is in line with the arch of your back foot. And your back foot is at a bit of an angle. So, And this will be different for everybody, depending. And dial that right or excuse me, left big toe in, clicking the heel out slightly, bending into your right knee, and we'll extend the arms. Let's take five breaths in warrior two. So now you're opening your hips to the side of the mat. Deepening your lunge. So you again, sink into that uh, right hip crease, releasing tailbone down, deep lower belly in and up. And turn your gaze over your back hand. Relaxing the shoulder blades down the back and over the front hand. Make sure your wrists are in line with each other. And I have a little burning in that right leg. It's good. And then reach the arms up straight in the right leg. Give yourself a break. And bend and extend a few times. Let 
lift the toes on the front foot. One more time. Good. Now, as you bring your left arm forward, your back hand, I want you to pivot on the big toe ball mound of your back foot and lift the heel coming back into your high lunge. All right, we're going to do this three times. So you're going to come up into high lunge. Your back heel is now lifted and roll open into warrior two. Okay, two more times. So pivoting on the big toe ball mound of your back foot, you're going to bring that left hand down, forward, and up. As your hips square now to the front of the mat, so you're drawing that left hip with you and open up, warrior two. All right, last time we'll meet in chair pose. So the left arm comes forward into your high lunge, hands to prayer perhaps, and left foot steps forward, back to your chair. I don't know about you, but my right leg is definitely feeling that. So, <laughs> and inhale to standing. Exhale, hands to heart, shake out your legs for a second. And we'll switch sides. So meeting in chair pose. This time you're gonna lift that right leg up three rounds coming into warrior three. And you can reach the arms back behind you. You can reach the arms forward. And we're gonna come into our dancing Shiva, drawing that right knee up. Back to warrior three. and Dancing Shiva. Last one, Warrior Three. Let's take a few breaths in our Warrior Three. And you're gonna bend that left knee. Take a big step back, high lunge. Bring your hands to your knee and we'll lower down that back knee. Good, so you might scrunch your toes forward We'll dip into our hips a little, get that really nice uh, psoas stretch on that right side, leaning back. And then finding stability. So maybe backing off a little bit, inner thighs together, zipping up from pubic bone to lip. And from the deep lower belly, reaching the arms up. So moving from your entire body, not just the arms. And then we'll draw the elbows down, out to the side, expanding across the chest, hands to prayer. Two more rounds, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, elbows down and around. Hands to heart, inhale. And exhale. And returning to our high lunge. So again, use your leg as a bit of a prop. You can tuck your back toes, lift the knee. Okay. Now when you do this too, keep the hips kind of low. Try that a few times if you will. Uh, and just press out through the heel. And tailbone down, winding it down. And reaching the arms up. Really revving up the legs. and rolling open into warrior two. So notice, uh, turn the big toe of your back foot in, heel out slightly, and take a look at your stance. So hands to hips, heel in line with the arch of your back foot, bending into that front knee. And if you need to, you can always straighten that leg. Again, you want some depth in that left hip crease, and try and get your um, uh, hamstring or the back of your left leg as close to parallel to the floor as you can. Releasing tailbone down, drawing the contents of the belly in and up. And then remember, always moving from the hara and extending the arms. That helps if you kind of reach forward and back a little, little sahaja, Get that energy flowing through the shoulders. And you can reach really, really hard and then go slack. You want to find that halfway point. Look at your front wrist and then look at your back where you're active, but it's not too forceful. You're still receptive. It's not all push. There's a little bit of soft. Bend into your left knee, engage. 
Check in with uh, the lower rim of your rib cage and the upper rim of your pelvis and line everything up. And once you're set up, there's nothing to do but hold the pose and breathe. Pay attention. So holding static for a few breaths. The pose starts when you want to come out. And then allow yourself that. Straighten that left leg, reach the arms overhead, bend and extend a few times. Inhale, oh, sweet release. And then exhale, bend. Re-engage. Inhale. Straighten. Exhale. Engage. And one more time. Anybody gonna lift your toes on your front foot? All right, now three rounds. Your right hand's gonna sweep forward. You're gonna pivot on the big toe ball mound of that back foot coming into your high lunge and open up into warrior two. Okay, pivot. Back leg is strong. Warrior two. Last one. And release. Now we're going to meet in chair. So you might bring your hands to prayer. Shift the weight into your front foot. And right foot steps forward. Sitting down. Inhale to rise up from your chair pose. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's circle out the hips again. Now that definitely wakes up your legs, right? All right, so we did little uh, dancing Shiva, chair pose, warrior one. Uh, next, I'd like to come into um, half moon, but I would like to use the wall. So if you have some wall space available to you, um, Let's move some stuff out of the way if needed. And from, uh, we'll start on the, the right foot, stepping the left foot back into extended side angle. So as if you're coming into a warrior two stance, and then we'll bring that right elbow on to the left knee. And just take a moment to open up that left hip. You might bring your left hand to your bottom ribs, help roll open like you're leaning back. And we'll bring the left arm up. And overhead. So a nice long left side body stretch. Release your right shoulder down the back. And you can even let that right arm hang just to re-engage. And inhale, come up through warrior two. And we're just gonna switch feet. So straighten the right leg, turn the right toes in and the left toes out. So I'm getting into our extended side angle on the left, pivoting on the feet. So uh, left elbow comes down onto the thigh and right arm overhead. Releasing tailbone down. You can bring your uh, right hand to your left ribs. Help roll them open again, deepen your lunge. Try and get your left hamstring as parallel to the floor as you can. And take a moment, you know, I, I'm a big fan of teaching people to place their hands where we're trying to stretch. It really helps to bring your awareness there. So you might bring your top hand uh, to the, the top of that iliac crest, the pelvis right there. You know, the elephant ears of the pelvis. So this is where you want to feel the stretch. You've got strengthening in your lunge and then opening on that right side body. So start here in the pelvis and then bring it up into the intercostal muscles, the lat, and all the way out through the arm. If you can look at your hand, look up. If that hurts your neck, look down. All right, and as you're looking down, you might remind yourself to tuck that left shoulder down the back. Three to five breaths. And inhale, come on up. And so someone's 
lifting you up from your back hand, straighten the left leg, pick up the toes and turn them in. We'll take a wide-legged forward fold. So uh, bring your hands to your ankles or your big toes and take it down. Might lift your elbows up, draw yourself in. Quads are lifting, kneecaps are lifting. You might wiggle in the hips. Then bringing the hands to the hips and elbows up towards the sky, halfway lift. We're just bend into that right knee, get a little lunge in there. And inhale center and bend into the left knee. So taking it from side to side, getting a nice uh, inner thigh stretch. Bending into the right knee. Now you can bring the arms out like airplane wings. Just keeping some heat building. And coming to center, hands to hips, elbows up towards the sky, inhale all the way up to standing. So I want to demonstrate um, half moon uh, real quick, and then we can do this together. So if you want, you can always pop the legs together. Uh, I'm going to take a block, and if you have one, again, um, use one. And we want to use the wall for, uh, for this. So uh, my right leg is going to be about one block away from, from the wall. So you have a little bit of room to roll back. And the block will be uh, up against the wall. You're coming in from, let's say, warrior two, so that your hips are already squared to the side and gliding forward. The block will be uh, under the shoulder so that you can lean back into the wall. And again, you bring your hand to that top hip, release tailbone down towards your heel, and we'll lift that left arm. So when you're ready, come on in, and your, your foot, will be about a foot away from the wall. So I can easily you know, put a block there and then the block will be flesh with the wall so that you can roll back into it. Now you want your right leg, your standing leg to be straight but not locked. So there's locked, there's neutral. And you want one straight line of energy from the top of your head all the way up through your heel. And see if you can bring your left ear to the wall. I'm opening the door. <laughs> All right. Now, if you're um, super comfortable here, we can start to bring the hands to prayer. You really have to press back into your left foot. It's a, a hard variation. <laughs> or you can keep your hand on the block. And again, you might bring your left hand under the rib cage, help roll your chest open. And we also have a tendency to lift that leg really high, so bring it down. You want your hips stacked, so your left hip is stacked on top of the right. When you're ready to come out, you want to bend your right knee, guide your left foot down. We'll meet in our warrior two. Straighten the leg, wide-legged forward fold to reset. So hinge from your hip creases. And you can kind of walk from side to side a little. Make nice with your hips. And take the block with you, if you're only working with one at home, and bring it over to your left foot. So uh, you turn your left toes out. We're meeting warrior two on that left side. <sighs> Setting yourself up again. You want that uh, left foot about one foot from the wall. Warrior two. You can come through extended side angle. You might look down at your block and then glide into your artist Chandrasana half moon. Okay, now remember your left knee is micro bent. So that's too much. That's too much. There we go, micro bent. Now I have this nice seam on the wall to help guide me. I can even let my, hip, my heel rest there. It's nice. <laughs> it's perfect alignment. Uh, so this would be too much, too little, just right. Right hip is stacked now on top of the left. Now this will also, uh, using the wall, allow you 
to relax a little bit and concentrate on your spiral rotations. So your left leg is in an external rotation. Your right leg is in an internal rotation. Otherwise, your toes would be up towards the sky. You want them pointing forward. So to the side, but not down. That's too much internal rotation, but straight to the side. Not up, that's too much external rotation. There we go, that's perfect. So there's a dance, there's a dance always. And try and bring the crown of your head in line with your heel, your back heel. And slowly look up, bring your right ear to the wall. Now lean back into the wall so that you can relax and breathe. right hip is where you should feel uh, the opening. Oh, no. and if you feel really comfortable, you can shift some weight into your back foot. See if you can bring your hands to prayer. Imagine that you're standing in the middle of the room. So committing uh, this balance and ease to memory. And when you're ready to come out, lower your right foot down, coming through warrior two. Come back to the middle of the mat and wide-legged forward fold. All right, so I've got one more uh, challenge for you. And it's a pose that you know, you're used to, triangle pose. So reset, now you might uh, heel to the feet in and come into a squat, kind of lift and lower a few times. If you want to add a lion's breath, inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, sit down into your squat. <sighs> inhale, lift the hips. <sighs> Good, and let's meet in goddess pose. So lift the hips up, widen your stance, hands to the hips, Come all the way up with a flat back and heels in, toes out. We'll sit down into goddess. So inner thighs rolling out. Five breaths. And we can expand and contract for those last three. So exhale, draw your hands to heart, rounding the back. Inhale, expand across the chest. Exhale, round. Inhale, expand. And rounding it. Let's come into five pointed stars. So straighten the legs, straighten the arms. Good. And hang out here for just a minute and I'll demonstrate. So we're coming into triangle pose, but I want to add a little extra challenge. So you can turn the left toes in and the right out. And you can work with your stance. You want a big stance for, for triangle pose. Now, the right leg is long, again, not locking out, not bent, but neutral. And you have this big external rotation in the right thigh. So this causes your knee to point forward instead of collapsing inward. So you might even try just letting the knee roll in and it can connect to the big toe bowl. Now that's your grounding point and externally rotate. Bring your fingers to that right hip crease and you want some depth here as you're hinging from the right side body in that right hip crease and coming in to triangle pose start with the hand up high and then you can work your way down okay so here's where again you can bring in your blocks especially if we're uh, new to the practice or still working on our uh, checkpoints just to set up because everything starts with your base now once you're set up, you can bring your hands to prayer or even just let that right arm dangle so you know you're not collapsing on the block. We want to work towards reaching the arms overhead. Five breaths. You're spreading them out apart between your feet. So we just opened up that side body, now we're going to make it work.
Now when you're ready to come out, we'll meet in our triangle pose and uh, rotate down into pyramid. So you let that left shoulder roll down and take your left foot in uh, and walk it in. So now you're about walking distance apart and you can square your hips off to the back of the mat. So inhale, lengthen the spine. If you have your block, bring it in. Exhale, forehead to knee. Now, one of my favorite things to do in pyramid pose is to interlace your hands behind your left leg. So you bring your right hand to the inside of your right leg, right knee, and now you're interlacing your fingers behind your left calf. Draw your right hip back in space, and it's just a, you know, variation. And now you're down here, look at your toes. Relax your head, shake it, yes. Now you can hang out here, or if you'd like to come into standing splits, bring your hands forward, touch your fingers, and point your left toes up towards the sky. And you can also bend and extend here. You might wrap your right hand uh, behind your heel. And again, if you feel really stable, both hands. Look down at the ground. We're gonna take a big step back when you're ready to come out. Pivot on your feet and let's just shift from side to side. Wiggling into your hips. If you wanna come down into Skandasana, make this a little bit bigger, you can. And hands to the hips. Inhaling up, let's come into our goddess pose. Put the heels in, toes out. Two breaths. And we'll expand and contract. So as you exhale, bring hands to heart, round in the upper back. Inhale, expand. Exhale. Like an accordion. I'm gonna draw the oxygen into your lungs and exhale, push it out. And five pointed stars. So straighten the legs, extend the arms out. And we'll turn the right toes in and the left out. So nice transition. Again, keeping that right hip out, kind of bend and extend that left leg, connect to your base. So some depth here on that uh, in the left hip crease, long left side body. And you can bring in the blocks or slide your hand down the leg. Remember, uh, we, we tend to get really hyper-focused on where our hand is, and then we lose connection to the hip. So start high, have that discipline to start high, and then slowly, inch by inch, work your way into a deeper expression of the pose. Sometimes, you know, especially for uh, long-time practitioners, we have a tendency you know, to go to exactly where we were yesterday, and the body changes every single day. So we want to uh, refrain from uh, practicing on autopilot. Yeah, this whole practice is about not living our lives on autopilot, but we tend to, to practice asana uh, that way. So uh, please allow me to uh, help to wake you up in that department. Bring your hand to your uh, right hip. So right hips rolling back. And remember that the blocks are tools. You know, sometimes the, the ego gets in the way. Um, you know, we feel like they're like a handicap as opposed to um, a, a learning tool. So once the base is set, then we can bring hands to prayer or just let that left arm dangle. So now you know if you have the abdominal strength to work to reach the arms forward. Now remember, keep rolling the right side body open. You might look up at your top hand. You're spreading the mat apart between your feet. Right hips rolling open. Five breaths, if you can. Come out when you need to. So that half moon really helped to open this up and now we're engaging. 
Length and strength. All right, so now right shoulder rolls down. We're coming into our pyramid pose. Just let gravity take you, and you can shorten your stance. So right foot walks in, and lengthen the spine. If you have your block there, you might use it. So nice long spine. You can draw the left hip back. Uh, both legs are long, forehead to knee. And I, I like to encourage people again that if you feel wobbly, to so always broaden your base, step that right foot out to the side, or maybe you can heel toe your left out a little bit. You are not confined to the edges of your mat. <laughs> And now left arm on the inside of the left knee, reach around and take hold of the back of the right calf, and then your right hand can come and match it. So now your shoulders are square to your front foot, your left hips reaching back in space as the right rolls forward. Now inhale, try and lengthen the spine, a little traction there, and then exhale, draw yourself in. Just until you feel a nice stretch. Couple breaths, you can stay here. If you'd like to come into standing splits, hands frame that left foot, point your right toes up towards the sky. Now your left hand will come back, catch the heel, with your level one. And you can also uh, corkscrew, drawing the right knee behind the left, curling into a little ball, maybe forehead to knee, and extend. Or work towards both hands behind your left heel. So you wanna get nice and steady first. Look down at the ground. And big step back with your right foot meeting in the middle, wide-legged forward fold. Make nice wiggle the hips from side to side. So inhale, halfway lift, exhale, catch your heels, draw yourself in. And hands to the hips, inhale all the way up to stand. Heels and toes out, last goddess. And five pointed star. Release the hands, draw the feet in. Let's come to the top of the mat. Inhale, reaching high. So we're nice and warm now, so maybe a back bend will feel good. Exhale, forward fold, catch your heels, draw yourself in, forehead below your knees. And the last challenge, let's step back into our plank pose. So don't worry, we're going to make our way into pigeon, uh, but first plank. <laughs> Soften the eyes of the elbows, you want to spiral them forward. Eyes the elbows forward, there you go. Good. And lower the knees to the mat, bring the hips to the heels for a breath. And find your blocks. So locate your blocks. And come to natural seat for just a moment. So again, we're, we're going to work our plank pose now, the same way that we started class in our cat bow. So maybe you bring your blocks to the inside of your, your thumb, between forefinger and thumb, and this is going to be a little bit of a, you know, an experiment. So stepping back from tabletop, so tabletop is neutral spine, so this would be sagging, lower doses, this would be kyphosis, and we want neutral. All right, and... Stepping one foot back, press out through the heel, and then the other. Now your hips really shouldn't move, so you can bend and extend. Switch legs. And now you're in one line. 
Activate solar plexus and we'll bend the elbows, lower down your shoulders, rest on the blocks. Inhale, press up. Now you can come back into down dog. Come forward into plank. And now you're on your toes, lower down. Shoulders rest on the blocks. Two more, so press up, press back. Inhale forward, lower down, elbows in. Now hands are flat on the floor. Notice if your hands start to peel up or curl up. So spread the fingers out, pressing up into your plank and we'll lower the knees, hips and heels. All right, so take a big breath in. Exhale out with an audible sigh. We are switching gears. So now coming into a pigeon pose from downward facing dog. You might lift your right leg up, roll your hip open. And airing out your right hip from all of the half moon and our, our uh, extended triangle pose. And we'll take that right knee behind the right wrist, parallel to the top of the mat, unfurl your back toes. Now, I just so happen to have a bolster. If you have one, you can bring it in or bring in your blocks. Maybe even on top, um, sprawl out. So we'll take eight breaths. Nice sleepy pigeon. Yeah, and bring in anything that you need to make yourself comfortable. Honing in on any tension that you might feel in that right hip. You might try flexing your right foot, pulling the toes up, and really press the, the knee and the shin and the ankle down to the ground. Don't forget about your back foot. So point out through your left toes too. After a few breaths, you might find that you can start to move some of your, your props out of the way as the body opens up. So now you might move a bolster if you're working with one at home and just replace it with a block for your head. Until finally you don't need any of them. Mailman. Yeah, man. <laughs> so come on out and draw your right knee back. Now you can always move through vinyasa here. It's always uh, you know available to you, or just come back into child's pose. We're all gonna meet uh, in downward facing dog. So whatever you need. Tuck the toes under, lift the hips, down dog. You point the left toes back behind you, sweep up, roll open, bend and extend. You might lift and lower your right heel, kind of airing out that left hip after our half moon and our triangle pose with the arms overhead. That's always uh, a crowd pleaser. <laughs> And drawing your left knee uh, behind your left wrist for pigeon pose. So your left toes are pulled back. You know, again, unfurl your right toes, point it straight back. And you might even look over your shoulder, make sure that your right toes are pointing straight back and not uh, sickling out to the side. Bring in anything that you need. Notice the difference between your right and your left side. We want to be comfortable so that the body will open up faster. If we're forcing the body to open, then we have to harden and protect ourselves. So uh, just allowing gravity to do the work for you, bring the earth to you. It is really that simple. Uh, we have a tendency to um, get in our own way at times. 
So let's concentrate on what we can do and where we can find ease and support and how we can provide that for ourselves. And that's so empowering. Instead of arguing for our limitations, let's find where we can excel. And when you meet the body where it is and provide uh, the support, then it naturally starts to give way and open up. So then we can start to remove the, the cushions, we can remove the blocks. And that is the witness. It's cultivating the witness to observe the release of the body and breathing into these uh, areas of tension and watch it dissipate. So then you can move the bolsters out of the way, bring in the blocks, and you're just slowly letting gravity unravel all of your stress and tension. Minimal effort. until you don't need the blocks anymore. They're just tools to get you there. So a few more breaths. When you're ready to come out, you can either move through a vinyasa or just take that left knee back to meet the right. You might circle out the hips. All right. So we're going to come into butterfly pose before making our way down into Shavasana. So you can bring the hips off to one side, swing the legs around, or hop to a seated position. And the soles of the feet together. Catch your toes. Inhale to lengthen through the spine, okay, nice and tall, and then exhale, rounding in. So we've touched all the uh, all all the uh, standing poses today, from uh, chair and warrior three to half moon. Um, we explored. Uh, a new way to be in triangle pose, uh, lots of wide-legged forward folds. So if you'd like to finish in a heart opener, uh, if you have a bolster or some pillows available to you, uh, you want to bring it to your lower back. And you also have the option of staying in butterfly pose, but I'd like to encourage you to bring the blocks under your knees again so that the body can release and unravel if if you're having to hold your knees especially if there's tension in the groin then it's going to cause the groin to stay uh, tense and we want uh, especially in root chakra for that to be able to relax and unravel so here's one option for shavasana or you can just extend the legs out uh, another option, especially if you don't have any uh, blocks or bolsters available to you, is to lie on your back and actually take the feet wide and let the knees dip in towards one another. Sometimes you can even take a belt or a strap and tie the knees together if that uh, if bringing the knees together requires effort on your part. So you want to really release any and all effort before coming into Shavasana. Even uh, allow your natural breath to return to the body so we're not controlling the breath anymore. So my exhale once out through the mouth. Turn the palms up to receive energy. Observing your natural breath. Before 
very gently beginning to manipulate the breath again. The same way that we started class, just inviting the inhalation to move into the belly. You might bring your hands to your belly to help you sense that the belly filling up. Taking three belly breaths. Expanding out in all directions, the front, the back, the sides. Sensing the floating ribs, the kidney space. I'm keeping one hand on the belly and bringing one up into the heart. So filling the belly first, so lower lungs, then upper. And as you exhale, chest lowers first and following navel in towards spine. A few rounds of conscious breathing. And as you breathe into your heart space, recall the intention that you set for your practice. And resting in Shavasana. Without changing anything, just observe your breath again, its pattern and cadence, where it moves in the body. And if you do notice any stuck areas, any places that the breath doesn't go, just observing without judgment or labeling. Begin to reintroduce some movement into the body if you like, or just stay in Shavasana as long as you wish. But even when we do find you know, areas of resistance in the body, you know, to, to even use the word stuck, you know, kind of has a, a negative connotation. So, um, It just is.
Just observe it. Any areas of tension in the body, you know, um, any patterns that we've built up, they're, they're there for a very good reason. Um, you know, they, they serve us for a point in time, um, but we want to also be able to let them go when they no longer serve. And awareness is key. Continuing to observe your breath and its pattern as you come to seated. close practice with a round of ohm. So again, uh, recall the intention that you set for your practice and we'll float it off on the ohm vibration, bringing hands to prayer, taking a deep breath. Namaste.